Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Kladai Community Church Sunday meeting. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, again, I always say this: it's a good day. The Lord has created this day. You know, a lot of things going on in the world, but you know, good news is God never changes. And this God is Almighty God, greater than the devil. Please remember that. He is good. He is mighty, and that's why we are here. We are here to praise His name and proclaim His goodness. So I'm excited. God's going to speak to us today. Excited? Yes. Yep. This is broadcasting from Wales, by the way. <laughs> you know. So here we go. Good morning, Lord. We praise you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We are so expectant. You're going to do such great things. Those people who are not very well, God heals. God healed before. As I said, God never changes. God heals now. So I pray that those people who are not well, that right now, hands of God will be upon you. The healing hand. The love of God and goodness of God will be poured out and pouring out right now into your body. So, Father God, I thank you, Lord. You bring a healing to those people. Father God, I thank you, Lord. You are good, God. And today, we are here to praise you and lift your name and proclaim your goodness to the generations and generations to come. So, Father God, we praise you, Lord, and thank you, Lord. And we hand over to the worship group. Good morning. Just wanted to say, as Goitsch said then, if it reminds me of the words of a song, if he, can, if he did it then, he can do it now. Um, the, yesterday I was reading a bit from Genesis um, where uh, Hagar had run away and she meets the angel of the Lord. And after hearing what he says to her, she says, she names God um, Elroy, the God who sees. Because not only did God see her right there, but he intervened to turn her back to the right thing for her. He stopped her on a path that surely led to struggle and poverty and hardship and he turned her around and he not only did that, he gave her a promise for hope and for the future of her and her ch child and, his, and, and the generations to come. And you know, God is, is your Elroy too. He sees you, he reaches out to you and he intervenes and gives you a future. The things that he did then, he can do now today and that's what he's doing. Today, and we won't be quiet. We'll 
will shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. No, He won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. We'll shout out your praise. Sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung upon the cross, then he rose from the grave. My God still runs stones away. There's joy, there's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. 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 Surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. We shout out your Looking for, for 
Praise God. Praise God. <sighs> Let's soak in His presence for a little while while I'm getting ready. Mm. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Has anybody got any picture, word, anything? Uh, I encourage you to come up. Yeah, okay. Mm, 
Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. You are the God of the restoration. And you're, you are the God who saves. Awesome. Awesome, God. Praise you, Lord God. Lord, please help me today to bring your word to your truth and your heart and your will. And Lord, as you said in your word, your truth will set us free. And free indeed. Into true freedom. God, we praise you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. You know, I'm so glad. God is God. You know, he's good. Always he's good. Well, today, <clears throat> excuse me. Well, I'm going to talk about something, hopefully. Well, not hopefully. That I, I know it helps because I got the confirmation of my word. Today's songs that the faith chose. I didn't tell her what I was going to be speaking today. But every single song that we sang will be in it. Awesome. Well, you know, we've been teaching and preaching. You, if you are a Christian for a long, long time, you've had a fair share of teachings in your life. Yeah? Preachings. And you've had all the theologies and doctrines. You know, you know all the denominations of churches. You bought all many books. And probably some people have been to many churches in your life. Confused? It is confusing, isn't it? You know? Calvinist, Calvinist, Anabaptist, Methodist, what are they all about? Not only that, they were Jehovah's Witnesses, the Mormons, and all those theories and doctrines and everything related to Jesus Christ. I find it very confusing. Don't you? Think about this. When Jesus was walking on this earth 2,000 years ago, and a little bit after he ascended to heaven, there was no Catholics. There was no Anglicans. There was no Welsh Baptists either. No Methodists, Presbyterians, Episcopals, Charismatics, Evangelists, evangel Evangelicals, uh, Free Church, Reformation Church, Reformed Church. None of them are there. They were only followers of Christ, weren't they? There are only the followers of Christ. Think this. Be, even before Moses, so-called Judaism came, do you know? Before the law, there were God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the people who believed in them. No great teaching of a theology of doctrine there. You know, I want to talk about the Christianity is very simple today. You know, it's about our relationship with God of all creation. That's it. And you can go home and contemplate about it if you want to. Well, I, I, I go a little further. This simple truth, our relationship with God, there are things we can do. And this is it. Love the Lord God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength, and love each other with the love of God. That's it. Well, that's what the Apostle John said. Shortest preaching, but absolute truth. Jesus said, if you do those two things, you fulfill all the law and prophets, everything God wanted, and you fulfill the relationship with God. Isn't it simple? Isn't it simple? You don't have to get conformed or anything like that. Love the Lord. Love each other. That's it. But you know, actually, it's even simpler than this. And if we know this, your Christian life will be much easier. I guarantee it. So today... I'm going to talk about, talk about simplicity of being a Christian. 
Okay, let's start from the beginning. First, God created whole world. Let's start from there. We need to know. You see, God created whole world, everything in this dimension. Do you know in science, they identified, I think, about 11 dimensions. But anyway, in this particular dimension we are living in, God created everything, including us. You know, we do not know why God wanted to do this. It's only God knows. So when I die and go to heaven, I'm going to ask God about it. And then he's got whole, whole eternity to explain to me. Brilliant. Well, do you know, just a little trivial things I found out recently. Scientists identified this called matters, which actually kind of making up our beings and everything. Matters, you know, the atoms and stuff. They said that they only know about the 5% of the matters in this universe they could identify. And they reckon there are some kind of matters we could not identify. It's called dark matters. And then they said it's only about 20%. How about the rest of the 75%? They don't know. They named it called dark energy, but they don't know what it is. We know. Big Bang Theory. Not the T American TV sitcom, though. You know? you know, they were saying that's caused by the big uh, dark energy. Dark because they don't know. But we know, do we? It's God. Most of the things in the university, the scientists don't know, don't know we can explain with God. So everything was created by God. Brilliant. You know, next question is the creation. Who is it for? You know, some think, some people think that the whole creation, that, you know, trees and seas and land and insects and horses and nice, lovely puppies and all, etc., were created as a part of the paradise for us to live in. You know, some people say, God created all these things for us because he loves us so much. Have you heard? Have you, have you ever thought about that? God created all the things for us. Lovely fruits and everything, you know. Tasty fish and, you know, beef and stuff. You know, that's not quite correct. That's not right. They were not created for us. They were created for God and his glory. I can prove it. If you got the Bible, open Psalms, chapter 8, verse 1. It says, Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Next one is... The Psalms 19, verse 1 to 4. It said, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hand. Next one. Colossians 1, verse 16. Well, you, you can have a look on the screen if you want to. For him, uh, for in him all things were created. The things in heaven and earth, visible and invisible, whether thrown or powers, or rulers, and authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Colossian Davos. Next one is Romans 1, verse 20. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power, and the divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. Hebrews 1, verse 2. It says, But in these last days he had spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of the all things, and through whom also he made the universe. John 1, verse 1 to 4. That's one of my favorite scripture. The word... Oh, Sorry. Let, let's, let, let's read from verse 1 till 4. Sorry, not the 14. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, good Christians you are. You've all got the Bible. I know. So, 
John 1, verse 1 to 4, one of the favorite scripture. It said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and was, the word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and, the, and that life was the light of all mankind. Isn't it good? And the last one, the Revelation 4, verse 11. Uh, thank you, Vicky. Revelation 4, verse 11. This is heaven's declaring. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by you will. They were created and have their beings. So as you can see, and then many more scriptures say that God created all things for his glory. See, everything was created to reflect or to portray or to manifest, to proclaim his glory in this dimension. That is the truth. What is his glory, you might ask? Let's look at the Romans 1 verse 20 again. God's glory. It says, For since the creation of the world from the beginning, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been seen, clearly seen and being understood from what has been made. Yeah? This is it. God's invisible, invisible qualities, the, his eternal power and divine nature. What are they? You know, that's their goodness, the greatness, God's greatness, the awesomeness, the amazing things, righteousness, and justness, the kindness, the mercy and grace. You know, his power, the wisdom, the love, all those qualities and attributes of God. Who he is, that's what the glory of God is. Yes. And... The scripture tells us from the, since the creation of the world, from the beginning, this God's glory has been revealed in the creations. Isn't it quite obvious? God made all this to manifest his glory in this dimension. Isn't it awesome? And you know, they were doing that exactly what they were made for when they were made at the beginning. They were reflecting, the portraying, the proclaiming God's glory. You know, the scripture said, if you don't praise God, even the rocks will cry out. Do you know why? Because the rock was made to proclaim his glory. And that was happening at the beginning. You see, when God finished creating all things, he said, it was very good, Genesis 1. He said, very good. You know, Hebrew word for good is word tob, T-O-W-B. It means, actually, other than good, means pleasing or pleasant. You know, God was pleased with what he had made because he was perfect. God was really chuffed what he made, you know. And even more interesting, you know, before the word tum, the good, there was a demonstrated particle, which is the word to emphasize what comes next. So there was a particular word emphasizing good, yeah, in the scripture. And that word is hine. It actually means look or behold or indeed. So this bit, it says God's... Indeed, look, this is awesome. God, was, God created everything and said, look around, oh, this is bringing good. In Welsh, that was. Yeah, he said, look, this is awesome, God said. Isn't it good? Why? Because his glory was fully reflected and manifested in his creations. That's why he said it's good. And things get even better. You know, God created mankind at the end of this. Marvelous things. And God created us. 
in his own image and likeness and breathed his breath, which is his spirit, into us. We are made something special. You know? Hebrew word for the image is uh, telem. Yeah? It actually means shape or figure or shadow or resemblance. Yeah? In his image, we are made in resemblance of him. And next one, the likeness. The Hebrew word for likeness is demuth. It means similitude, which means that the quality or state of being similar to something. God made us very much similar to him. Well, so what it means, it's not in appearance, but God breathed his breath, the spirit into us, and God created mankind as his exact copy or replica to represent him in this dimension. Do you know God is spirit? He is beyond dimensions. But in this particular realm, God created us as his representative, the exact copy. That's what the scripture meant. Just, oh, looks like him or resembles. No, God created the exact copy. Do you know when Jesus came on the earth, he was an exact representation, representation of God, he says in scripture. Do you know when Adam was made? Probably, I believe, Adam looked like Jesus. Because exact copy and representation of God, the first man. But anyway, by the way, when I say exact replica copy, I meant in nature characteristics. Not in his deity, by the way. Because nobody can become a copy or replica or take his place. So I got to mention that. So God made us, mankind, in his image and likeness. Why? This is the bet. Our purpose in the creation. You know, there are two purposes we have, God made us for. Purpose one, to reflect and manifest God's glory as a created beings, just as in any other creations. We are here to carry his glory, portray his glory, proclaim his glory with our beings. How do we do that? Easy. Be like Jesus. See, Jesus Christ came as a man, and he was the, invi uh, he was the visible representation of the invisible God. That uh, Hebrews 1, verse 3 said, The Son is a ra radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his beings. And Jesus himself said in John 14, and oh, the few chapters uh, after that too, he said, if you see me, you see the Father. You know, funny Philip. And show me the Father, show me the Father, Lord. I saw daft. I said, you see me, you see the Father. Okay. You know, some people are like that. When we see Jesus, we see the Father, the God of all creation. And the thing is, we are to be conformed in the image and the likeness of Jesus Christ, who is the glory of God. That's what the scripture says in Romans 8. So we are created to be like Jesus, to represent him on this earth. Remember, Jesus is sitting on the throne in heaven. He's not on this earth. We are his representatives. We are his ecclesia. Ecclesia is the chosen ones who are to represent someone. The uh, Bible says we are his ambassadors. What it, meant, what it means is we are created to be like Jesus in our nature, how we live, how we act, how we think, to represent him on this earth, earth to proclaim glory of God. Right. Simple is, you know, Genesis 1, verse 28, it said, Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. You know, as we, the ones just like Jesus, when we multiply, we in the increasing number, when we make disciples, like, just like Jesus, God's glory increase 
on this earth. You see, making disciples of all nations, Jesus said, it's not for growing churches or establishment organization. We are growing the glory carrier. That's why we make disciples. So that's the purpose one. The purpose two of our creation is to govern and to take care of his creation. Genesis 1 verse 28, he said, uh, God told mankind to subdue the world creations and have dominion over. Strong words. You see, in our human uh, thinking, in the English translation, subdued and dominion, is kind of a, it has a connotation of a really a kind of bad reputation, isn't it? You know, you dominate over someone, they subdue some. It, it isn't at all in the original scripture. The word subdued in Hebrew word is kabash. It also means keep under control. Keep something under your feet. Keep something under control. That's what it meant. You know, mankind was given a task to bring God's order to the creation as, he, as his rep representatives so that creation will manifest his glory as they were created to be. Do you know, the creations, the nature, is often quite scary and fearsome and sometimes gets out of control, isn't it? I tell you what, if you read a job, Book of Job, God said, I created a Leviathan, Behemoth. Do you know what they represent? They represent the uncontrollable power of the nature. And God said, I created it, and only I can tame them. But God created mankind on this earth to represent them, to subdue them, keep them under control so they would not bring a distraction. That's why. We can, you know, we build all those things, don't we? Yeah? River banks and stuff. You see, we are here to govern, bring in the governing, anointing over the creations. And the word dominion in Hebrew is the rada. It, it is about the transferred authority, not about forceful subjugations. You know, some people think, not dominate this. No, God says, I give you the authority to govern this nature. I tell you what, Genesis 2 verse 15 tells us, the Lord God took a man, took the man and put him in a garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. This is what it is. God did not give us authority over the creations to, for us to do whatever we want. That's what the people think. Oh, we are the man of authority. I can do whatever we want. We can do whatever we want. Some people think that in destroying nature and that kind of things. No, God said, take care of it. Make sure they live in the full state what they're created to be. Mountains should be mountains. Trees should be trees. Cockroaches should be cockroaches. You know, they've got purpose to glorify God. Rats and stuff. I don't know. And lovely puppies. I keep mentioning it. Yeah. And we are here to look after them. Look after them nicely. Your pets. You know, they are there to glorify God, not to give you comfort only. You see? You can shout at them because you can govern them. But remember at the same time, they are there for the glory of God. So it is simple. We are created to glorify God through our beings and to look after the creation that glorifies God. It's not about us. It's all about Him. He created all things for Him and for His glory. And we are here to do that. You see, secular world is trying to save the planet you know, save the planet, save the planet. 
you know, recycle. Don't drive with big cars. Why? To secure their own existence. I tell you what, scientists, they proved it. And history proved it. Earth can survive all that. They can regenerate, and they have been doing it. Only thing is, we may not. And that's what people are scared of, isn't it? That's why. Save the planet and think about the children. Children can think themselves. Oops. That's my opinion. You know, we Christians should be trying to save the planet for God and his glory to be fully manifest as he designed the creation to be. That's why we recycle. Okay? You know, that's what we were doing, the human beings were doing at the beginning. And God said, it is very, very awesomely good. I'm well pleased. But we all know something went wrong, didn't it? So something went wrong. I'm going to carry on. It'll be quick. What happened? The fall of a man. We all know that. Deceived, deceived by Satan, the mankind sinned. What was the sin of the man? I thought. You know, many people said the sin of the man at the fall was a disobedience to God because they disobeyed God's command and that was a sin of the people brought the fall to the world. That's a general consensus, isn't it? I thought deeply about this and I thought, maybe not. You know, dis disobedience the mankind had was sheer stupidity. It's a stupid decision. That's why it was. Yeah? The sin that the Jesus died to save us from was this. Our desire, the mankind's desire to be independent from God. I think that was the main part of the sin that the mankind brought into this world. Genesis 3, verse 6, it says, When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. Yeah. It said the woman is mankind, by the way. You know, the prior to this line, actually Satan told her, if you eat this tree, uh, if you eat this fruit from this tree of knowledge of good and evil, you will become like God. Verse 5. Yeah? And then following lines, the women thought, that's desirable to be wise. Actually, she was saying, it's desirable, desirable to be like God. That's why she took it. You know, mankind was already, already like God then, when they were created. That's what we talked about. You see? But mankind wasn't satisfied with that. They wanted the position of authority like God. That's why they saw this fruit. said, oh, that would be really good if, I can, if we can be like God. By eating the fruit, mankind declared to God and to the world this. Now we have become like God on this earth. Not just a representative, we are God. We decide what is right and what is wrong. You know, that's what the knowledge of good and evil, isn't it? What is right and what is wrong. We decide. You know, we can do this. We can make it without God. That's what, he, that's what they were saying. We do not need God because we are God on this earth now. That's what this episode is repre representing. And this is what exactly Satan did. God put, created them and put them everything he, got, he's got, he had. And he thought, well, I'm like God. You know, 
that's always the Satan's uh, scheme for man. Make man proud so that they would say, we don't need God. Isn't it familiar nowadays? Society. They say God is dead. Oh, well, something coming in. Something's coming. Mankind threw away their dependency on God. They cut off their relationship with God. That was a sin of the mankind. You know, I've heard people say sin is a separation from God. And actually, that is right. But it's not a circumstantial separation. You know, some people think, yeah, because their disobedience, God turned his face away from. No, that's not the separation. The separation was willing choice of the mankind and said, I don't need you. I can do all things through myself. I decide what is right. I decide what is wrong. I, if I say white is black, white is black. Bad is good, good, bad. They ended the intimate relationship with God. That was my sin of the mankind. And what's the result of the sin? Well, this is what happened. No relationship, no authority. You see, divine authority only comes when we have a relationship with God. You see? There is no other way. When we connect it to Jesus Christ, Jesus gives us the authority to operate in. You know, it's like this. If you're a policeman, you've got the authority to enforce the law because you are connected to the police force. When you retire or quit, you come out of the force, you do not have the authority, do you? No, exactly. So this is exactly what it is. Mankind, when they belong to God, attached to God, have a good relationship with God, God gives them authority to govern whole creation. But when they stepped out, said, I don't want this relationship anymore, then this authority to govern is automatically taken away. Mankind lost their authority. Mind you, as Romans 11 verse 29 says, their callings and giftings remain the same. It's irre irrevocable. But without authority, they cannot operate in it. Okay. You know, the psalm says, the mankind gave away their authority to Satan. Didn't they? Oh, Satan. In Luke 4, he said, all the authorities have been given to me. I thought deeply about this. Carefully. And I thought, it may not be correct entirely. You know, first of all, this divine authority was not theirs, the mankind, to give away to begin with. Didn't I say? It was vested from God. That authority belongs to God. Yeah? And Satan did not have relationship with God, didn't he? So how come he could have this divine authority from God? Why would that Lord God Almighty will give enemy the authority? If they don't have a relationship, it doesn't make sense, does it? Satan said, I have authority given to me. I believe that the authority of man as a human being, not the divine authority, you know, when you allow Satan to come into your life, he will have authority over you. That kind of authority? You know, when you give them, open up yourself to the drugs, crimes, the abuses, whatever the Satan wants to bring, if you open up, you are allowing them to have authority over you. That's why Jesus said, resist the devil and he will flee. You do not give 
the authority or opening door to Satan, and they, he cannot do anything to you. So I believe when Satan talked about it, it was talked about the man's human authority. And then remember, the Satan is a father of lie. Jesus said no truth in him. So how come you're going to make statement? Said, oh, Satan said in Luke 4 that uh, I've given all the authorities. He's a liar, didn't he? And Jesus did not give an inch, didn't he? Yeah. But anyway, I just wanted to add to this. And also the scripture said Satan is the prince of this world. Means he's not the king. There's only one king. And king has the full authority over all. Princes and princesses. Princes. Hard to say, but it's okay. But mankind chose to reject and throw away that divine authority. What's the consequences of that? Well, mankind was no longer governing or taking care of the creation. They couldn't because they don't have authority to do it. The creation began to decay and corrupt. Romans 8, verse 10. Oh, let's have a look, if you, if you could bear with me. Well, I'm almost there. Romans 8, verse 10 to 21. It says, Romans 8. Romans 8? Uh, sorry, Romans 8, verse 18. I beg your pardon, 18. I consider that our present sufferings are not worthy comparing to the glory that will be revealed in us. That's what we are created for, remember. And verse 19 said, For the creation waits in the eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, us, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from the bondage of decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. You know, all the things happening, it's our doings. But God is good, isn't he? God want, wanted to restore everything, you see. In John 3, verse 16, it said, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son to save the world famous quote. And we usually think God so loved the people in this world he wanted to save us. We sang, didn't we? God so loved. Do you know, actually, God so loved everything he created in this world, including mankind, including trees, including rocks, the seas and rivers and land, the puppies, cockroaches, and rats, too. <laughs> God loved everything he created, so he wanted to save them all. You know, as the whole creation corrupted and decayed, God's glory was diminished in the creations. And God's, God is not going to have that. He's going to restore. And God's plan of restoration of the whole creation was by restoring the caretaker of the creation, us. The one who are in his image and likeness. To do that, their position of divine authority needs to be restored. It means the restoration of the relationship with God. Are you getting what I'm getting? Yeah? Whole creation is decaying, therefore God's glory is diminishing. He wants to restore this by restoring the caretaker. But caretaker needs the authority. But authority only comes from restore the relationship with God. Therefore, Jesus came to restore that. <sighs> Here we go. At last, we go this far. Son of man, Jesus Christ came. As a second Adam. 
And this is what the book of Hebrews is talking about. So please read the book of Hebrews and you get that. Okay, now, Jesus came to save this world. The believing in Jesus Christ, we believe in Jesus Christ. By declaring our faith in Jesus Christ, we are actually declaring our dependency on God. You see, the salvation, we cannot do it by ourselves. We need to totally depend on God. That's why God wanted the salvation to come as, a, as His grace, not by works, like any other religions. Other religions tell you, do this, you get saved. Do this, do this, and do that. Seven steps to the salvation. No. God wanted us to restore, to regain this heart to depend on God. That's why the salvation, we must just trust and believe in God and blood of Jesus Christ. And Him alone. You know, people who are credited as righteous by God in Hebrews 11, all those characters like Abraham and all those, they were all had the dependency on God in their lives. And God calls it faith. Without faith, we cannot please God. This is the truth of the salvation. We declare our dependence, dependency of our lives and soul, spirit to God. What are we saying? I trust you, God, because you are a good God. I depend my life on you and trust my life to you. And God said, now, let's restore this relationship again as you come back to me. And this is what it is all about. You know, God loved Jacob who had many bad behaviors and character flaws. And God hated Esau. That's what the scripture, Romans 9, verse 13, and Malachi 1 says. God said, I loved Esau. Uh, I loved Jacob. I hated Esau. I, I wonder why. The difference between them, the Esau was a self-made man. He was one of the guys I can do with my own power and ability. I can make it myself. You know, he never relied on God because he could do it, getting all the wealth, etc., etc. And he became the father of Edomite, the enemies, arch enemy of Israelite. He represents the world. We can do this. We can send a man to the space. We can colonize the Mars. We can do this without God. That's what Esau is. But Jacob, he always depended on God. You know, he wasn't a good character. He was a schemer from the beginning, didn't he? And he said, mother told me to do this. You know, went to relative's place. Well, I'm going to tell them, my uncle, give me all those black sheep whose parents are white sheep, etc., etc. He was scheming all the way through. He even ran away. And then when, when he was just about to encounter the brother, he thought, oh, he might be angry. I'm going to put my wife's and servants and children in front of me just in case he's really angry. You know, he was a nice character, was he? But God loved him. You know, those character, character flaws, the bad behaviors, and stupidity. Those things that people are calling sin, putting a burden and chain over people, don't we? You smoke, you drink, oh, you're sleeping with all of those people. Oh, you're angry, you lied, you steal, you swear, you're sinning. Little, whatever. Do you know? They are not sins Jesus died for. Did you know that? They are just bad behavior and sheer stupidity. Yeah, it's stupid to drink too much or do drugs, so it's stupid. 
to swear because you look stupid when you're swearing. In a bad behavior. And those things, of course, God will help you. Why? Because they are not glorifying God, is it? So that's why we don't want to do those things. But God can deal with that. That's not the issue for him. The issue was our relationship with him. You see? But the world, churches, all those people putting on burden on people and actually putting people away from Christ because you're so sinful. You smoke. You dye your hair. You got pierces in your tongue. That's fine. You know, God will take you through to sort out eventually if you don't want it. You know, if you're a smoker, God still loves you. You know, you can go to church, just a smoke outside, so it won't bother other people, that's all. Or fire risk. Yeah. It's about the heart for God. The real sin, which is the willing separation and the resignation from the dependency on God, the mankind ended the relationship with them. And they became no longer the caretaker of God's creation. The creation began corrupting and decaying, and God's glory in them began diminishing. That's what the Satan wanted. Do you know that what the devil said, Satan wants, that ultimately, that God's glory will not be manifest in the creation. That's all that. He doesn't want you to be part of his minions or anything. He doesn't really care. All he cares is creation. Stay. Creation will be stay, uh, remained decaying so that God's glory will not be manifesting. Well, God desired to restore all this. So he sent his only son, Jesus Christ. He was a God incarnated himself into this dimension as a man. So as people come to believe in him by faith, the mankind's dependency on God came back. Mankind was reconnected through Jesus Christ. And the divine authority was restored in mankind again. Now, mankind in Jesus Christ has been reinstated into the original calling as a caretaker of God's creation. And to make sure his glory manifests in this world. That's our purpose of the existence. You know, Jesus on this earth was the example for us. You know, Jesus represented the glory of God. And he glorified the Father. As the followers of Christ, we must do the same. Live our lives as he did. And, we, and if we do, we glorify God and we take care of the creations. Do you know, do you remember some years ago we had a wristband that said WWJ? What would Jesus do? And then it was, became so popular, and then people kind of stopped wearing them. I tell you what, that was absolute truth that this generation should have. What would Jesus do? In every situation we encounter, we should ask the question and do exactly what he does. And that's how we glorify God. That's the only way we can glorify God fully to fulfill the first purpose and second purpose. The fullness of life that we talk about often is to fulfill what we are called to be and what we are called to do, which is be like Jesus and love God and love each other and govern and take care of his creation for his glory. Always think how we can glorify him in everything in our lives, everyday lives. See, that's what the purpose of existence 
Isn't it simple? Be like Jesus and glorify God. In the many teachings, preachings, like preachings and teachings, theologies and doctrines that we invented. You know, Roy said, tell me, you know, theology is something, uh, making something simple into something complicated. You know? And that's what we did as a human being. Things are so simple. Our lives, our existence, is to glorify God. So, when you walk out of this place today, when you turn off your computers, just think, how do I glorify God? If you are cooking lunch, think how you glorify God through cooking lunches. Take care of your bodies, glorifying God. Take care of your children, it's glorifying God. Be a good mother and good father, it's glorifying God. You know, be a good worker, employees at the work, without grumbling, without gossiping. That's glorifying God. Stick to the speed limit when you're driving as a law-abiding citizen. That's glorifying God. And recycle, glorifying God. You see, many ways, many ways. If you start thinking about God, how do I glorify you in all things? I tell you what, your walk with God will be on the righteous path. So simple being a Christian. Love God, love each other, and think about how to glorify God. That's all. All the teachings, everything, they are the tools to help us to achieve that. And if you know that, you can measure everything in your life. And you won't be confused. When Jehovah's Witness comes and starts talking about scriptures, how do I glorify this? Think about it. You'll be fine. <coughs> Healing people. Laying hands. People get healed. Glorifying God. Isn't it? Because who he is manifested. His goodness is poured out. Preaching the good news of salvation. Jesus Christ. The people who don't know. Glorifying God. That's what Jesus did. Jesus went everywhere. Not to become an Anglican or Catholics or evangelical charismatic Presbyterians. No. He went around to glorify God in everything he does. Isn't it simple? Is it helpful? I hope so. So Father God, I thank you, Lord. Actually, everything is so simple in you. Help us to walk in that relationship with God. Relationship with you. Help us to be like Jesus and Holy Spirit, lead us how to glorify you in every moment of our lives so that you'll be pleased and said, this is very good, awesomely good. I'm well pleased. So thank you, Lord. Bless you, everybody. Thank you for listening. And go and glorify him. Amen.